Instead of talking about leadership, I'm going to talk about work life, what you do and don't. Um, and as I started my first job, after a few years of college, as you heard about, I was a professional student, never a bad thing. Um, we started my first job, desks, lots of desks. My boss came, pulled me over, and he said, you know, Doug, there's only three things you really have to know in order to be successful in the company. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How do you be successful? Give us some examples, some good examples. Um, some examples that weren't necessarily so good that I've, uh, that I've seen in the workplace. And we'll talk about, you know, how to manage your career. So what Steve told me, he said, know what the boss wants. Pretty simple thing, right? I'm going to expand that into know what you want as well. So there's no. So when I go like this, I want you to say no. Can everybody do that? No. All right, a little better. One more time. No. All right, so you've got to know what you are, who you are and what the boss wants. That's number one. Number two, do what the boss wants, right? It's, a lot of times it's amazing, and we'll talk about a few stories about people that have never, they know what the boss wants and they do something completely different, right? The boss doesn't necessarily like that. Um, so when I go with this hand, my left hand, right, right, left, um, that's a do, right? Okay, ready? Do. All right, I gotta get some interaction. All right, we're getting there. So the third thing, and this is where my risk management culture comes in, and, and I'll say it the way he told me, and then we'll talk about the realities of it. Have a drink with the boss, right? So, no, do, drink. <laughs> okay, so drinking, we'll talk a little bit about drinking. When you're 21, you can actually have a beverage, right? Um, and it really, as you go into the workplace, it doesn't matter whether it's alcoholic, non-alcoholic, water, coke, juice, whatever. You just need to socialize and network. And that's the whole piece of it, is socialization and network with your colleagues, okay? So you do those three things, you'll have a successful career, right? He told me that like week one of day one of my career, and I've thought about that throughout my career, okay? So we're gonna start, we'll talk about... No. Okay, so know yourself. So there actually happens to be a fairly famous pike by the name of Stephen Covey. Anybody heard of Stephen Covey? Couple of you? All right, he passed a few years ago, a couple years ago. He wrote a book called Seven Habits for <coughs> Effective People, I think. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, and there's a thing in there, and as I started my career, so you heard about a lot of the degrees and the things I do. Basically, I'm the head geek. Um, so I'm a mathematician. Um, physics, whatever, I solve problems with math. That's who I am. Um, and as I looked at my first job, it was a research and development job building jet engines. So I worked at Pratt & Whitney. Anybody, any aerospace or guys that love airplanes? All right, I got all kinds of stories for you guys. Um, engines falling off, um, flight recorder information coming out of the sky, um, out of crashes, that kind of stuff. We can have that later. Um, but as I was working at Pratt & Whitney, one of the values instilled at me by Pike, by my family, by others, is really understanding and serving others, right? So as I thought about when I'm in a company and I need to know myself and know what my boss wants, is really understanding, hey, what do I value? So Stephen Covey has this thing called a personal mission statement. So as I was looking to move out of my research and development job, into a manufacturing job. This was my first career move. Big move, you know, why? So my boss goes, why the hell do you want to do that? Right? You're a research guy, you got a PhD, you're going on the manufacturing floor where you got the union there, they're going to spit at you, they're going to do all kinds of things, and you're going to work 24 hours a day, three days or seven days a week, 200 and, or 364 days. We did get one day off, and that was Christmas. Um, so I had people working for me. I did end up going. Uh, to do that. So they came to me and, and he said, well, go talk to my boss's boss. All right, so you're kind of scared. You go up and you talk to the director of the laboratory or whatever. And he said, why do you want to do this? And I said, well, I personally believe, right, that in order to lead people, you have to understand everything that goes on. Okay, so that was a value that I had learned that when you're leading people, you have to understand everything about the different people that you are leading. And that includes manufacturing in a 
in Pratt and Whitney that included manufacturing. In banking, it includes call centers, it includes other things. So understanding the company that you're working for is critically important. Um, so I said, I want to go to the manufacturing floor. They kind of looked at me like I was crazy and said, before you do that, what do you value? I want you to go, I, ha I actually had read Stephen Covey's book, um, and I want you to write a personal mission statement. So I did, right? And I actually have it. This was back 1997 that I wrote my personal mission statement, right? Two pages, talks about what you value, right? Husband, father, I was married at that time. Husband, father, family member, friend, leader, teacher, all of that. Those were what was valued for me. So I put my values onto paper, right? Talked to the guy and he said, this is what I value. I talked to him about having to learn the manufacturing. He said, okay, just fine. I also talked about in the end game, put the, put the end first, um, first things first, right? So he said, what do you want to do in your career? So I have a career path that I said I wanted to do, right? And one of the things that was in there, and it's staged out in my life, right? And actually, I'm on this last line now. It's kind of scary. Um, one of the things was to go back to school. Okay, I had a PhD already, um, but I wanted to understand business. So I said in there, hey, I want to go back to school and learn business a little more, and I want the company to send me. He's like, yeah, yeah, nice. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I went, I was on the manufacturing floor. And we talked about unions, you know, treating people decently uh, is one of those things that if you do, you know, and you're a servant leader, that's another kind of leadership thing that, that I actually had learned about. Um, there's a guy named Greenleaf, if you ever want to know. Um, little pamphlet, 1973. Got this off of Amazon 20 years ago. It's called the servant leader. Well, what do you do? You serve those who you lead. So as an example of that, manufacturing floor, it's dirty, right? We're coating parts, there's dirt everywhere. We have to clean it. That's part of the, the application of it. So what do I do? I take the dirtiest job, right? So whatever is the worst job you could possibly have. Anybody think of dirty jobs? Any examples? Uh, Tanner, what's a dirty job to you? Uh, a janitor. A janitor. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, engine oil change. Engine oil change. Okay, I didn't, th so these big machines we had, that's, those are two pretty close. We have these big vacuum, vacuum chambers that were spraying plasma spray. Uh, coatings on parts, ran on a lot of oil, dripped all over the floor, right? They also, dust and powder and everything got under these machines. You could fit under them on your back looking up and the machine was right here. So what did I do? Typically, if you go under those machines, there's paint on the floor and they just paint the dirt into it. So as I went under those machines to clean it, right? There were bolts and nuts painted into the floor. Okay, that is not taking care of your equipment, by the way. So if you have your house that's got stuff painted into the floor, tear it up. Um, so I was under the, under the floor cleaning and <laughs> the, head, the head of the manufacturing facility came in. Right, so I'm in a bunny suit, all dirty. He's like, hey, I want to introduce you to Doug. So I'm crawling out, you know, and hey, you know, I don't, can't really shake your hand because I'm all dirty. Um, so I did that and then Lo and behold, the next week, one of the other guys that worked for me that was a union employee that had never done anything, he volunteered to go under the machine. Okay, so when you serve people, they will actually respect you and, and, and monitor your leadership. They're looking to you. You know, every person in your house, the others are looking around. You talked about the friendship. They're looking at you for that leadership. If you do it right, everybody will follow. Okay? Um, okay. So that's about knowing yourself, right? Oh, that was weak. There we go, there we go. So know yourself, know what the boss wants. Okay, so how do you find that out? Any, ask. Okay, so, yeah, Brett, you wanna tell me? You ask him. You ask him, that's one thing. So there's something, you know, annual planning cycles, you get your performance and development plan every year. Anybody had a performance and development plan? Worked out in the corporations yet? Yeah, a couple people. There are these nice annual planning cycles. You go and you fill out your goals for the year. We have, in a couple companies I've worked for, you're either a meets, an exceeds, or a does not meet. You know, how would you like to be a does not meet? 
Um, doesn't feel good. Um, but as you're doing that, how do you exceed? So I tell everybody, if you do what I ask you to do, you're a meets. Okay, so you need to try something and understand what the boss wants that he's not asking you about. Right? And then try it and bring it to him and say, hey, what about this? Right? So if you just do in your corporate life exactly what the boss tells you to do, you will stay doing that exact job your career. Okay? You need to understand what the company needs and what to do without that. I got an example, and I guess I should say, since this is being filmed, none of this has to do with real people. Um, they are all examples of fiction and uh, not based on anything else, right? I've had lawyers, I talk to lawyers a lot these days. Um, so there was a person um, that was working and uh, he wanted the next job, right? We all want the next job, right? Hey, I want to have this job over here. It's not necessarily the job you're doing today. He wanted the next job. He kind of knew what to do, but he didn't do what his boss asked. He did the next job. Right? So he's like, you know, in order to get promoted, I need to dress like the, new, what the job I want, which isn't a bad philosophy. And then I need to go make sure that guy likes me so he can give me the job. What he forgot to do was the job he was doing. Right? And so as the boss goes into the, the system and all of a sudden you have a cut, right? you've got to sh reduce your workforce by 10% or whatever, guess who didn't have a job? The guy who was, he was good, he was smart, he was trying to do the right thing. He was doing the other job. He wasn't doing his job. Okay, so do the job you're in, which brings us to? Do. No. Do. Much better, Jeff. <laughs> okay, so do the job, right? So as you're doing the job, you have to do what's asked. If the boss asks you three times, right, and you still haven't done it, you better get on it. Okay, so I've ignored my boss. I do sometimes, because um, he's asking something that, you know, some, some bosses like ask a lot and then don't expect you to do everything. Um, it's just some bosses ask you once and expect you to do it. You have to learn what your boss wants. Um, so some of them, and there's times where the third time they ask you, if they're the ones that ask you all kinds of things and never expect you to do it, um, the third time they ask, you better do it. Um, so there is an example of, uh, of this that I was working, not my current company, different company, where we were looking at uh, future growth, right? There's always, hey, grow revenue, we want to do that, grow. If you're in a profit, for-profit company, you want to grow revenue, cut costs, all that kind of stuff. Grow revenue. I want to look at, see how I should phrase this, the next internet technology that's out there. So it's Sprint, right? I want to look at the next internet technology and I want it to be you know, MPLS. Well, I thought that was an idiotic idea, so I didn't do it. Comes back to me three weeks later, hey, I, where's, you know, I want you to do this. Okay, got it. Still didn't do it. Um, third week he comes back to me, dude, where's my study on MPLS? I'm like, okay, I got it. Um, MPLS, multi-protocol language system, something like that. Um, it's all they're arguing about, net neutrality. Anybody heard about net neutrality? I'm gonna go on a tangent. Anybody like net neutrality? Don't like net neutrality. Yes? No? You don't? No? Net you like net neutrality? Yeah? You like the net neutrality? Oh, good. No, do. I can't get people to vote. That's good. That was very good. Um, so net neutrality is where the internet is the same for everyone. Well, MPLS basically dedicates part of it this way or that way. So we were talking about that 20 years ago. Um, so you can dedicate bandwidth within net neutrality with this MPS. So that's kind of beside the point. But we, we did the study. Um, so the third time he asked, I went and did it. It was actually very successful, so I was wrong. That brings me to the second point. When you're doing something and you do something wrong, right, don't try to hide it. Just admit, and I, you know, a couple days ago I did something wrong didn't have the right person in a meeting. Um, so I said, dude, I made a mistake, right? Admitting you make a mistake, right? When people can trust when you've made a mistake, they will trust you with more because they know if you make a mistake, you'll fix it, right? So as you're, you're knowing what to do and you're doing it, you're gonna make mistakes, 
So as you make mistakes, as soon as you realize it, talk to people. Hey, I made a mistake. Here's what I'm going to do about it. That's very critical for what you do. Okay? So as you're knowing and doing, every once in a while, you have to network. So what is this? This is a big networking session, right? You get to know some of the alumni. You get to know me a little bit. Make sure you're introducing yourself. And the way my boss put it, have a beer with the boss. So in Pratt & Whitney, that was the first job I ever had, um, there's this place called the High Test, right? So we're in the middle of a swamp. There's this gas station outside of Pratt & Whitney in the middle of a swamp. BP, by the way, um, for John's sake. Um, they had a cooler of beer, right? So if you wanted to go to the High Test, that's what happened after work. Hey, you want to go to the High Test? So you'd go. And what you learn about people when you go is not just what they like about work, but what they do outside of work, what their personality is. A lot of times you get some interaction with people, but you're not getting a lot. So as you network them, network them, network it around the place, you're getting to know people on a personal level. Right? That's critically important as you think about your jobs, because it's likely you're not going to get the promotion in the job you're in. I don't know how many people I've coached and talked to in my career, and I'm mentoring people. The job you're in, if you actually get promoted in the job you're in to the next level, that's a very low percentage. The way you get promoted is to go to a different job. Um, hopefully in the same company, not necessarily, and that's a choice you have to make. But when you're looking for the promotion, look for other things to do, right? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to meet the people? Well, you're going to have a finite group with the work that you do, go out and have a beverage um, at the high test, you're going to meet other people. They're going to get to know you. You can talk to them. And the best thing you can do as you're doing this is, hey, can I set up some time with you? I want to learn about your space. Right? right? You're in a particular space. It's always great. I always love this when people come up to me and say, hey, love to learn more about what you do. There's nothing people like more than to talk about themselves, kind of like me today, right? talking about myself. But people love to talk about themselves and what they do. Makes them feel important. Um, they're helping you learn the business and learn everything. So as you go up, you know, hey, can I set up some time to learn about, you know, what well, I was in material science. I want to learn about, uh, you know, the F-119, F-22 engine. It's a cool engine. You know, I want to learn more about it. Okay, what about externals? And they'll, t they'll talk about their externals or whatever their subject matter is for a long time. <laughs> And then the next time they have a job opening, you can say, hey, that's a cool area. You know, if you ever have something, let me know. It's not going to happen then. It'll happen later. They'll say, hey, I remember this kid named Rick, right? I like that guy, you know? Seems like a smart kid. I'm going to, let, let me call him up and see if he's interested in the job. That's networking, okay? So as they're, you're networking around the company you're in and between companies, so you can join other little groups and societies, either Charlotte area, Pi Cap Alpha um, alumni situation. They're all right here, by the way. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that. They, uh, you're you're going to learn and, and know about more businesses and more people. So now that I know these guys a little bit more, or I know, you know other areas that, I, that I'm involved with, I tend to be involved in geeky stuff, um, and analytics and big data society of Charlotte, right? Wonderful thing. Um, but those are the people that have things in common with you. Now, if I, if I start looking for a new job, and that's, boss, that's never going to happen, by the way. Um, if it ever does need or I need a job, then I've got people to call. Critically important. OK, now here's the, the thing. It's unbelievable to me how many times I walk around, 4.30, 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, whatever the end time is, and I'm burned out and I'm ready to have a drink. I'm at, one, right? I'm going to have one, maybe two. Um, and I go around and ask, hey, who wants to go out and have a drink? Unbelievable amount of time that people say, ah, oh, you know, I got something tonight. Or, hey, not tonight. Um, go back there. The third time they turn me down, I don't go back. Okay? So, if you have your girlfriend, have a wife, have some buddies you're meeting for a beer afterwards, and the boss comes around and says, hey, kind of burned out. I'd like to... to decommission or, or let out a little little steam, let's go have a beer. Call your buddy, call your wife, call whomever and say, look, I'm going to be a little late, okay, and go have a beer. 
Go have a Coke, go have a water, go have a juice, go whatever it is, it doesn't matter, right? It's the socialization aspect of work because everybody's a human being that you're working with. They are trying to do their best. There'll be times as you're doing this that you're mad as hell at somebody for doing something, right? You can't believe they did that. That's happened to me. I've pounded my fist on the table and said, what? Few, few choice words, um, but they're all trying to do their best. So that's what I've learned in my career is you sit back and you say, hey, everybody's trying to do the right job. There's only been a couple times where things were malicious, right? And that, that's very, very rare. You have to assume the best of people, even though you may get angry, you may get mad. Um, as you're working in your life, what do you need to do? You need to Very good. Okay, so those three things, you know, you're working through, you're trying to do it, and uh, you can be successful, right? Those three simple things have carried me from company to company, carried me from job to job. I think that out of my entire career, and I don't know how many jobs I've had, quite a few, I've actually posted to one, right? So as I go, and you know, I've probably had 20 jobs, in the 25 years that I've been working. Um, so an average of one to two years in a job. Um, I've never really asked for the next job, once. Um, I've, I've said, hey, I'm ready for a new job. I wanna start looking and then my mentors and my peers and my boss has helped me find a job. But it's about this networking. So I've been successful in my career by networking around and people saying, I want Doug on my team. And then you look at him, you're like, okay, um, right, I posted to one, I moved companies one time because I wanted to go home. Uh, you have to make family choices and the values I talked about, family, fatherhood, husband, times you'll make choices, those are more important than your work. So I've done that. I made a choice to move back to Kansas. Can you believe Kansas, somebody wanting to move to Kansas? Um, when my kids were born, there was a choice, right? So this is when I posted for a job. I moved to Kansas and I was looking for any job I could find because in Kansas was my family. So I had two young sons. We were out on the East Coast, not a lot of familial support. I said, I want my kids to grow up around their cousins. So I made a choice to move jobs. You will make choices like that. When you make a choice like that, explain it to the people you are leaving because you never know when you may want to go back. So it's very important. Okay, so I'll. How many of you are gonna have had interviews for jobs? But, oh, good, this is good. So I ran a, an, a campus interview program. Uh, we're gonna go about some do's and don'ts when you interview. Um, that was recruiting um, for a company. I hired about 25 people a year out of college. Um, so as you're going into your interviews, there's a couple tips that I would give you. Know what the company does that you're trying to get a job for. This requires research web searches, whatever. So there were people, and I'll give an example of Bank of America. I'd say, hey, what does Bank of America do? Right, through some kind of question. And they'd say, well, you know, they've got credit cards. I'm like, what else? Well, there's banking, you know, I can deposit my money. That's a big part of Bank of America, but it's only a small part. There's a lot of other things that, that they do. Commercial banking, corporate banking, investment banking, wealth management. You need to know what the companies do. So usually when someone would, when I'd be talking to them and they uh, would actually know the full breadth of the company, I'd be like, okay, this guy's done his research. He's, they know what to do. The best way to do this, I know this is a little boring sometimes. Any finance majors here? All right, you guys know what a 10K and a 10Q is? Yes, no? Rick, no, Ben, no, okay. 10Q, what's a 10Q? It's filing. Alex. Of companies, like this board of filing. Public companies, they, they tell the world about their company, right? Every quarter, and then the K is the annual report. The Q is the quarterly report, and the K is the annual report. Go to their website, there's usually an investor relations website, and download it, right? And read it. You don't have to read the whole thing, but read their 10K and 10Q. So I got my job at Bank of America. I printed off the 10K and I read it on a plane going to my interview, right? So I could find out, I didn't even know what banking was, 
right? I didn't know that they had all these things. I, so I read the 10K and 10Q. In there happened to be something about airplanes, right? I'd worked in the airplane industry. They had lost a boatload of money when some of the airlines went bankrupt. This was back a few years ago, not recently. So I'm like, oh, I know a little bit about airplanes. So that was an interesting area to me. And lo and behold, and I, I read other, the 10K and their problems and what they're doing well at. So when you're in your interviews, you're talking to the people about their business. And the fact that you're knowledgeable about their business impresses them. And then, of course, the guy that I'm interviewing with was the guy that was the risk officer, the compliance officer, whatever you want to call him, over the airline industry. So when I start talking about the airline industry and the problems I had seen in the 10K, he's like, I got to hire this guy. I got a job. Okay. I've interviewed, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 kids coming out of school. Sorry, I should met gentlemen and, and women um, coming out of school. There's probably five of them in the entire time that actually knew about the company I was inter that they were interviewing for, more than the surface level. So if you can go in to your interviews knowing about that company, what they're struggling with, because in the notes section of these things, it's all the ugly stuff that you can read about this company. You know, and have an opinion. Hey, I saw this or I saw that. Can you tell me more because I couldn't get it out of the, the public information? They may or may not talk to you, but they'll be impressed with the fact that you know about their company. It takes time. Okay, those are the good things to do. Know about the company, have interesting questions. With LinkedIn and Google and Facebook and everything, you can research, get the names of the people you're going to be talking to and research the people. It's an amazing amount of information. I recently hired somebody that uh, she sometimes refers to herself as a cyber stalker. Um, she's not really a stalker, but she goes out and, and researches. So she knew everything I did, right? There's a lot out there about uh, myself. I'm actually kind of controlling over it, but there's still a lot out there. She knew about me, she knew about my family. Uh, that's one of the things you can't ask about when you interview though. That's illegal, um, so you need to talk about the job, but you can know about the people. Um, so that, that's good to research the people that you, you can know what they're interested in and maybe uh, bring something up in the interview. That would be awesome. Okay, here's what not to do. When you go in and the company's got 25 or 30 people there all interviewing for the same job, right? A lot of, there's, there's some campus people out there that say find the decision maker. Right? Who's going to make the decision about whether you get hired or not? And make sure you introduce yourself to them. That is a good thing. Right? It is not a good thing to follow them around and to barge into rooms and try and only focus on that person. So I've had kids, gentlemen, from one of your universities, by the way, um, that basically came in and he followed me around everywhere I went. Okay? He didn't have a job the third time he came up to me. Okay, so yes, you need to, to know who the decision makers are, but you do not need to stalk them in the interview, right? You need to know the other people that are interviewing and be able to do that. The other thing we typically do is we'll bring them in the night before, have a little reception, and then potentially if they want, well, there'll be some people that'll take them out to the lo see the local, local scene in, in Charlotte or Kansas City or wherever. Don't get drunk, okay? Don't get drunk. There have been many kids that did not take the responsibility. This is an interview, right? It doesn't matter that you're out in a bar or you're out in a, in a reception somewhere. You are being interviewed every step of the way, right? So the people, and we're watching, right? That's part of the understanding your character is can you handle yourself in a social scene. I know gentlemen of Pi Kappa Alpha always handle them well, themselves well in a social scene, right? Nobody ever gets drunk, nobody ever does that. Um, you know how to handle it. You can have a beverage, maybe even two, no more, okay? <coughs> Only if you're legal. If you're not legal, make sure you're not drinking, um, because we're watching that too. The other thing you don't want to do, there's some cute little girl or somebody else that you hook up with. Not a good thing 
at an interview. Okay? It isn't, because when we call the next morning, because you're late and you're not in your room, and we call the other person that's late, and you're in their room, you don't have a job. So, remember, these are fictional, never happen. Okay. Um, so the other, thing is, the other thing when you're interviewing is be yourself. Know about what you want to do. Know the values that you have. You can put Pike Alpha Alpha on your resume. Leadership positions is very good. Don't overemphasize it. Okay, there is, there's all the good stuff about Pike Alpha Alpha. There's also other stuff in the news. Not everyone that you're going to interview with is a Pike. Okay, some people have a very favorable opinion of fraternities. Others don't. So it's important that you have your leadership skills and stuff there, but it's also important not to overemphasize it. Other campus activities, other jobs, that type of thing. So I've mentored a couple other people. That's one of the things you do, right? When you're giving back, you, you're mentoring as you get up in your career, even your peers, share your experiences. They'll come and ask you, hey, I'm in this situation, what do you think? Provide your opinion. Tell them you don't really know sometimes. But the, the other thing about networking and the people I typically work with aren't necessarily as social as most pikes, right? I'm in, I, I said I'm the head geek. Sometimes people don't look past their computer screen, um, ever, right? So if you, to get them to talk, they don't necessarily do that. But I've tried to help, and, and you guys can do this. So as you're walking around today or in your workplace, there are going to be a lot of people that you recognize, right? When you're going through the hallways, Keep your head up, right? Look them in the eye, say, hello. If you know their name, call their name. Hey, Ben, right? And keep going, right? Because the next time you're in a meeting with Ben, and Ben and I are in a meeting, he's going to be like, what's that kid's name, right? I don't remember it, but he said hi to me in the hall. He must know who I am. Because I, I, there's thousands of people in my company that I don't know their name. They all know my name, okay? But if you say hello to me, Next time we're in a meeting together or I see, I'm going to like, okay. I'm going to like, hey, I'm Doug. And you're going to be like, I'm Ben. And then you get to, now I know your name, right? Hey, I'm interested in your area. Do you mind if I set up some time and, and learn about you and what, you, what your area does, right? That's all you need to do. And then you follow up, okay? So as you're walking through the hallways, you know, you can say, hey, Brett, how's it going, right? And if he stops, then you stop. But if he just says and goes, then you just keep going, okay? If you stop and you block the hallway and he's either got to get lunch and back to his boss or whatever, he's going to remember you in a negative way. Or she, could be a she. Um, but it's important to be able to say, I've got it, networking and understanding and getting, it, getting the attention of the people that you work with, whether that you work with them directly or not. Uh, so critically important. So back to the things, right? One of the things I've learned is you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, then you tell them what you told them, right? Anybody heard that before? All right. So what did I tell you at the beginning? No, do, drink. All right. So you guys learned the three things I wanted you today, told a few stories along the way. I think that's it. We're turning it over to Chad. Thank you.